Thanks, Sorry. President. Uh, Childwise research with young people in sex work in Melbourne found that 16 out of 30 participants had been in the state care system, while 13 had left home because of physical or sexual abuse or neglect. For many sex workers on visas and migrant sex workers, family violence is also a common experience. We need transition services for these women who do not want to be part of the industry anymore, and they need to be funded properly. If the sex work lobby tried to turn this into a discrimination, I would ask them to consider that whilst they may be educated, enjoy their work immeasurably and are, and are huge advocates for sex work and its perks, there are others who are not doing this work by choice. There are others being exploited and there are those who have left the industry after traumatic experiences. You may have read in the explainer that I sent out with my amendments that the sex work industry in the Netherlands is moving away from the full legislation of sex work. They have the most well-known industry in this space in the world, yet they are moving away from the system which we are about to adopt. Shortly after legalising the sex industry in the early 2000s, USA's Department of State ranked the Netherlands as one of the top five countries of origin for trafficking victims worldwide. Given this, it is not shocking to see the Netherlands moving toward uh, requiring all sex workers and sex work businesses to have a permit, as well as raising the age of legal prostitution to 21. They say, and I quote, a national register of sex business with a permit will be set up there will also be a register of prostitution permits, unquote. They say that this is due to the growth of the industry and the fact that it is, and I quote, unchecked, unquote. Basically, this means that with the passing of this bill, without amendments, we will have an unchecked industry with virtually no oversight. As other evidence shows, we will also continue to have a two-tier system, like they still have in the Netherlands, where certain businesses avoid all planning processes and local compliance despite the bill seeking to move away from this two-tiered system. Victoria Police, Professor Peter Miller, Uniting Church, Project Respect, Coalition Against Trafficking, Women Australia, and a whole range of other bodies are not happy with the supply of liquor in brothels. I have to say that I was a bit perplexed as to why we need to supply a substance that blurs the lines of consent into these places, places where sexual services are offered. A review of literature of alcohol use among female sex workers and their male clients, published in 2010, reviewed 70 articles covering 76 studies. The review found that alcohol use by female sex workers and their male clients was associated with adverse physical health, illicit drug use, mental health problems and the victimisation of sexual violence. A study from the Netherlands found that sex workers working in context where alcohol was sold drank more than other sex workers and that client's use of alcohol increased aggression towards sex workers. Further, there are concerns among several groups that some brothel owners may adopt the practice of having their employees promote the sale of alcoholic beverages to their clients to drive up profits on the alcohol side of the business. And I really hope that this is not the case. Interestingly, the discussion paper for the bill points to how the industry might benefit from liquor licensing, but doesn't talk about the benefits for the workers themselves. And this is disappointing. I'll speak further about my amendments in the Committee of the Whole, President, but I would like to have these circulated now, if I can. Amendments? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Member to continue. Thanks, President. Uh, in short, these amendments will seek to uh, firstly transfer the Minister's delegates' review of the, to the Victorian Law Reform Commission, secondly, introduce an offence for prohibited persons owning or running brothels, and thirdly, introduce a brothel owner certificate. In summary, despite all of this talk about sex work reform and reducing stigma around the occupation, it seems to have been lost on the policy makers that there are many sex workers who want to leave the industry. The government needs to provide a commitment that programs assisting with transition from the industry will be available to all sex workers, whether citizens or those on visas. I'd like to thank the number of people my office has met with in preparation for this bill, as we haven't found it easy to assess and form an opinion on in the absence of the review on which the bill is based upon. There are good bits in the bill, but as you can tell from my contribution, we don't think it's perfect. We've tried to get as many perspectives on the legislation as possible to make sure as many voices are heard as possible. 
I'd like to thank the New South Wales Police, Victoria Police members, including those from the Sex Industry Coordination Unit, who do a tremendous job in trying to keep sex workers safe. Professor Peter Miller, Uniting, Catwa, Project Respect, Sex Work, Law Reform Victoria, Scarlet Alliance um, and Vixen, especially Dylan, whom my office met with a few times, Tish Sparkle, St Kilda Gatehouse, Jade, a pseudonym, a former sex worker, a number of university professors who have researched in this area, the Queensland Sex Industry Licensing Unit, the owner of Lorraine Star, and other premises where sex work occurs, and a range of others. As you can see, we have not taken this bill lightly at all, and have sought opinions from far and wide. The welfare and safety of sex workers should be at the forefront of this bill. In conclusion, we will support the bill due to a decriminalisation of sex, uh, street based sex work, but would caution that this bill does nothing to help women transition out of sex work, nor does it have any prohibition on criminals, sex offenders, or other questionable persons owning premises or managing sex workers. This is a problem that we will seek to address through the amendments later. Thank you. Thank you. Not fair to call the next speaker, so we'll, I'll be presumed the chair at two o'clock.